Hey guys, this is part five of episode 10 of The Boss Battle Show, where we will be discussing the reboot of Mortal Kombat from 2011. Get over here! Welcome to part five of the Boss Battle Show, episode 10, the legacy celebration of Mortal Kombat, Adam, Ronan, Gordy, Timmy. We're going to talk about the reboot and the relaunch of the Mortal Kombat saga that came out in uh, 2011, uh, came out April 19th, 2011, on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Uh, for me, I think it's the best MK since MK2, and I'll tell you why. Because. I had been longing for a reboot of Mortal Kombat because I felt like the story was just getting convoluted and weird and, you know, it was just it was falling off. But then, turns out, you know, I remember sitting there wondering, are they ever going to make another MK game? And then, boom, they were like, surprise! Yeah. WB bought us, now we're NetherRealm Studios, now we have a huge fucking budget, and we're, re we're remaking the game, we're calling it Mortal Kombat, and it's a retelling of MK1, 2, and 3. And I was like... God damn, there are Elder Gods watching over me. There's there's always really been two piles for MK games. It's like, there's the, the ones where they were just passionate about making an awesome fighting game with the true to form story. And then there's the ones where it's like, they got involved in like the media train and those ones, you know, or they were trending with something else, like, you know, making ultimate like Street Fighter or whatever. So it's like, you got these really great ones where they're super passionate, like one, two, and then you know, 2011, and then there's the other ones, which were cool. Right. Mm -hmm. And this was like, we're passionate about it. We don't care about the money. Let's make a good fight. And they also went back to the 2D fighting plane. Mm -hmm. uh, they made Thank it. You. They made it tournament viable. Right. Um, with the wake-up game, they had footsies. They had cross-ups. They had everything. Parries and everything else. Parries, everything have, yeah. that a fighting game has. Uh, it was the first MK game to ever be involved in an Evo tournament. Uh, it was a big deal, mm -hmm. and it was a monumental seller. It sold. Uh, I want to say something like eight million copies. It was up there. Yeah, I'm probably wrong. Don't fucking quote me. We can fact check it, but we're not going to. Um, and it was huge. And it was, until this point, my most anticipated MK game. I fucking ate up everything every day. I was yep. on forums. I talked to everybody. I sucked its dick. I sucked your cock for a thousand dollars. If it had one, it's proverbial. We were actually living together at the time. We, we lived together yeah. when it came so, out. Yeah, we were. I remember you bought me a huge Mortal Kombat poster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it, the first time I ever played MK against him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was their first in. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, All right, let's do it. I was like practicing with Ermac, getting really good. And, yeah, Ermac yeah, and I was could, your uh, boy. do these just crazy combos. It was cool because you could put your combos together. It was more like. Yeah, it was a very it was, creative combo system. It, it was. It was way cool. And I was like, and then Tim grabbed the controller. And Tim's just naturally good at Tim fighting games. Like, he's, <laughs> yeah, just, he's just good at them. Yeah. I mean, it's like FPS and fighting games. Those are my name. Right. That's where I live. Um, I, but, I still distinctly remember like a controller spiking in my living room from that and uh, quit fucking blocking! Because <laughs> 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 he'd come through and I was just like, <laughs> and, it, and if you remember, like you would come through with something and as soon as you blocked, it was an auto juggle. So like you would just oh like when I scorpion teleport and you flip yep. it. and then your guy just spins in the yeah. air and it was like now it's my time <laughs> yeah but it was it was great and it's I still play it to this day I've been playing it more to prepare for MKX mm -hmm. but it's fucking awesome and that that story mode was so diverse like it they and they started the story mode have, with the with quick interjections does that mean have you been practicing for this as well are you are you preparing with something I've been using injustice. I haven't, I haven't, yeah. I haven't been practicing. Jordan hasn't turned on his Ooh. Xbox in today will be 10 days, because my Xbox told me when the last time Jordan was <laughs> yeah. seen I, I've just been doing homework, so. Okay. Um, um. But, uh, the story mode, they started with the chapter segments in MK vs. DC, which is cool, but then this one took you through the storylines of MK 1, 2, 3, while still being a sequel to MK Armageddon, they went, they went back in time, did all kinds of shit. It was mm -hmm. so, it was, it was cheesy. Like the voice acting was awful, but it was so cool to see my favorite games, MK1 and 2, played out in the whole cinematic thing. And um, it was great. Fucking alternate costumes online was fun. King of the Hill mode, like it was so dope. And we played it again. We had the Fiesta played. Oktoberfest we, we, turned into the Fiesta. Yeah, we, so Oktoberfest with MK Deception, then they stopped releasing the games in October. Yeah. 
and then we changed it, then to, we changed it to just fiestas. So now we just have fiestas. Two of us we would party and play games. But I remember we went to GameStop for midnight. I spent like 350 it was bucks. Ridiculous. I bought yeah. the tournament edition with the freaking stick, huh. and then I bought the fucking collector's edition as well. So I had two with copies the, with of the, the bookends. Right? The bookends. Yeah. You also bought the uh, PlayStation version so you could get something because yes. you gave it to me. You didn't. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I remember you bought both versions of it. Yeah, I bought everything. And the fight stick. The fight stick. Yeah. I spent all all the money in the world on MK. <laughs> Plus, I bought the fifty dollar hardcover strategy guide book, which was awful. Like it was wrong. Their characters were mixed up. Like Cyrax had like Liu Kang's moves and shit in it. It was just bad, but it was cool. It had the art book. Everything was so sick in that game. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you know, MK was back on top of his game. It sold well. People were into it. It was tournament viable. Players were playing. Kind of birthed some of the greatest fighting game players that we have now. Perfect Legend, he's the number one player in the world. Pig of the Hut, a bunch of great tournament players. Who? Sonic Fox. Sonic yeah. Fox, he's great. Um, and uh, tournament is actually a big deal for fighting games now. If you want to survive, you have to have some credibility yeah. with the tournament world, mm -hmm. and it just speaks to the the balance of the game and how well it's actually structured and put together. And if you don't have that, I, I don't think a fighting game is going to last long. Mm -hmm. No, of course not. And that's the interesting thing about Mortal Kombat is they've always had like some type of communication with their fans. In the early games, you know, people thought, oh, this guy in the background is a secret character, and then eventually yeah. he became a secret character. They interact oh, with yeah. the community. Yeah. They listen to the community, and they're getting even more involved with the. Uh, the, right, the like, fighting community, yeah, like, so like Noob Saibot and stuff. People are like, who's this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, yeah, Noob Saibot. And then also, I remember that rumor in MK2 where sometimes there was a glitch where Katana would turn red, and they were like, oh, it's a girl named Scarlet. She's a new character. And then it was like, they, yeah, and then they, they made Scarlet a character, for yeah. a DLC for MK11, and she was pretty cool. Yep, they've done MK11, that with MK2 so many other characters, even the era macro. And era um, macro turned into era macro. Everything but horn buckle. Horn buckle. Yeah. Poor horn Even buckle. Blaze, the bad guy, the on the background of the Pit Two and MK Two, the guy on fire, he ended up becoming Blaze. He was the yeah. fucking guy on fire, the bad guy from MK Armageddon, the worst villain that MK ever had. <laughs> um, Fan input's huge, and I think that's what's going to help make MKX great. Is because now with like Twitter and stuff, and well, yeah, because Ed, Ed Boon is ridiculous Ed active Boone's, on Twitter. I mean, oh. he's you know back and forth with people all day long. Well, back and forth and trolling the fuck out of everybody <laughs> yeah. on a constant basis. That dickhead. You know, and they've got they got all the streams and stuff. So with every stream that comes out with this one, they get just loads of feedback for one segment. They're like, here's a character, and it's ten minutes long, and then people watch it, and they're like. Oh, I hate this and I hate that about it. And you know that there's developers on the back end. They're like, all right, cool, let's listen and yeah. let's hopefully change that up and start balancing, which now they can do on the fly, right? The next system. Well, yeah, well, they didn't have it, but for Injustice, the game that they had after MK 2011, right. uh, which is kind of like a spiritual successor to the but fighting no, but engine. But for MKX, they're going to have. No, I know, but MKX. they that's for Injustice, they introduced the hotfix system where they yeah. can fix things on the fly without even having to download a patch, mm -hmm. and then they're bringing that in for the next game, Mortal Kombat X, which I feel like will bring us to our last segment of the series in which we're going to discuss the release of Mortal Kombat X, Mortal Kombat 10. Ah!